A beautiful look at Chicago on Super Sunday, a city that knows a thing or two about championships. And we've got the reigning Big East champion, DePaul Blue Demons, ranked 11th in the country, welcoming in the Providence Friars here at Trust Arena. The road to the Big East tournament here at Trust is on. Entering the second half of conference play, the Blue Demons looking to bounce back from their first loss, while Providence trying to get out of that bottom tier as we welcome you courtside, everybody. Great to be with you on Super Sunday. He is Matt Schumacher. I'm John Fanta. And these two teams both looking to bounce back. DePaul up by 20 on Creighton on Friday, Matt, and the Blue Jays shocked the conference with a victory. They absolutely did. And we got to give a big shout out to Olivia Alger for Creighton. Dropped 28 points for a team that is without Jalen Agnew. That was a huge win for Creighton. Now Providence looks to carry over the momentum that Creighton started on Friday. They need this one right here, Erlet Scott. Last year, she struggled a bit with her confidence in conference play. That is not the case this season. Double figures in four out of the last six games. They need a double figure day from her today to compete with this Blue Demons side. On the other side for the Blue Demons, Shantae Stonewall, a 20 point performance. She willed DePaul time and again in the gutsy two point loss to the Jays. Well, you know, John, I've had the pleasure of talking with a bunch of folks around the league and Stonewall is without a doubt a WNBA player who has the ability to score at all three levels. But more than that, she has a competitiveness that you cannot teach. And every year she's found a way to get a little bit better. This season now as a senior, one of the best defenders in the conference had 59 steals all of last year, already 57 with a full month to go in the season has really developed into an all around player. Let's look at our starting lineups for this Friars squad. We told you about Erlet Scott. She was held to just one point against Marquette. Mary Baskerville is the one down low who gets it done for them that Jim Crawley says they've got to get an inside to. Yeah, absolutely. Was the Big East freshman of the year last season. John leads the league in blocks, has gotten stronger, can score in more ways. I think she's huge tonight, but I also think Alyssa Geary is really big as well. The sophomore for Providence who's six foot four. She can be a real shot alterer if DePaul goes into the paint today. Stonewall and Baskerville for the tip. The Friars in the visiting black uniforms win it and we are underway here from the Windy City. Some Super Sunday Big East hoops. Angela Lewis, Tom Donaher, and Frank Steratore, our veteran officiating crew. It'll stay with the Friars. How does Providence contain that DePaul tempo? Well, that's just it. You know, we had a chance to talk with Jim Crowley going into this game, and he said it's really all about tempo when it comes to playing DePaul. They have to find a way to muddy the waters a little bit, make DePaul play in the half court. A double dribble called on Lexi Held. And look, it doesn't have to be the whole game in the half court, John. We know that's not really possible against DePaul. They average some of the, the highest point totals in the country. But you have to make them play in the half court some of the time. And that'll allow Providence to dictate the pace enough so that they can keep pace with the Paws offense. It's a Providence team that averages just under 62 points per game. Scoring has not come easy at times this season. And on the other side, DePaul at 85 per game. Baskerville off the window. And right away, we saw the double come over. They just didn't execute it well enough with Held slipping into the lane. And Baskerville doing a really good job. A sophomore averaging nearly 13 per game. Stonewall short. And a jump ball, possession arrow with the Blue Demons. And that's what Jim Crawley said would be key today is to try to take the formula that Creighton used on Friday. He said it's easier said than done, but we've got to use the shot clock. And off makes ensure that DePaul doesn't just drive the lane as Deja Church gets them on the board. Well, that's what Creighton did, too. They forced DePaul into some sets that they didn't really want to run. And as a result, both teams had a lot of turnovers in that game. Widmeyer and the Friars have come out sizzling. The other thing that Creighton did was force DePaul to take a lot of threes. They took 20 three-pointers in that game and only hit four of them. Campbell short on the three. This Providence team led after one quarter at Marquette Friday. Ended up losing by 30. Widmeyer in and out. This time, Aguirre with the putback. And the Friars came to play. 
Love that. After a 20-point loss to Marquette on Friday, there is no hangover for this Providence team. It's a young team that lost Yo-Yo Nogic and Matty Jolin, two sharpshooters that Sonia Morris answers. So many weapons, so many weapons, no matter what part of the court the ball is on. There's always that threat to score. Widmeyer this time takes it and scores it. Good no call there. How about Widmeyer's aggressiveness and confidence early? The sophomore from Nova Scotia. Playing an increased role as conference play has gotten going. Here's Church from way downtown. That's not the shot that Doug Bruno wants. And then a foul on Morris going for the board. I like this. A little scrappiness from the Providence Friars. Well, this is also sometimes the after effects of losing a game. Because for DePaul, they'd only fallen to UConn and Oregon State. Right. Two teams that they were behind most of the way. This is new territory for this team, being up by 20 and then losing a lead on Friday against Great. Also their first Big East loss, to your point. But just like we saw on the men's side with Seton Hall the other day, John, nobody is going undefeated in conference play on either the men's or women's side. The, the league's just too strong for that. Church off to Campbell, the senior, knocks it down. And with the three ball, DePaul is never not within reach. And then this pressure off makes can be lethal. Right there, Morris all the way off the steal. And just like that, DePaul has the lead. Kayla Webb's tougher than that. She's got to keep the ball on the string a little bit better. Played at Detroit Country Day High School, which has a history of tough, really good basketball players. Her dad is a coach. She's tougher than that with the ball in her hands. Friars head coach Jim Crowley saying this is what makes playing DePaul so difficult. They don't beat themselves. They do everything they can to force mistakes on your behalf as Baskerville travels. But good feed inside from Kayla Webb as we take a look at this last Sonia Morris layup. Actually, it was a three on the outside by Kelly Campbell. And then the pick and coast-to-coast -coast take from Sonia Morris. And the Blue Demons, Kelly Campbell with another bucket. If you blink, you'll miss them score because that's how quickly they do it with the 85 points per game. Campbell recently surpassing the 1,000-point milestone. Also with... Over 500 rebounds <laughs> has gotten it done in the assist category as well. And Doug Bruno believes she's one of the more underappreciated players in all of women's college basketball. Seven on the shot clock now. Williams into Baskerville. The double team ate it up. DePaul on a 7-0 run. This is where Providence has to maintain composure. Church was fouled on the take. It's Baskerville just with her first, but that's a number to monitor. The storm can come at you quickly. You just mentioned a 7-0 run for DePaul. The key for Providence today is to not let runs get more than 7-0, 9-0. Because when you get DePaul on a 15-0 run, that's when the game can get away from you, especially for an offense like Providence, where they've struggled to score at times. This time the Friars get a stop. Williams, the New York City product, off to Widmeyer. Widmeyer, just short this time, and held with the board. Here is Lexi Held, a talented sophomore, leading DePaul in scoring in conference play. Now Campbell. Got the friendly <laughs> bounce, and Kelly Campbell with eight points in the opening five and change. That's as much as she's averaging per game this year. And after a hot start from Providence, DePaul comes right back. Round Ball Express. The DePaul Blue Demons on top 15 to 9. Round Ball Express for DePaul Ball, Mr. Schumacher. We'll talk more about it after our first timeout. Blue Demons up by six, looking to bounce back on Super Sunday. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. 
are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. You get a bucket hat on your way in? I didn't, but I need to get one of those. Those are yeah. fresh. Yeah, that's perfect for a Chicago cookout this summer. <laughs> They still got a couple months left to winter here, John. Summer is still ways away for these Chicagoans. That's true. But it makes them feel warmer while they're here at Wintrust Yeah, Arena. you might be right about that. And their Blue Demons have come out warm. Six to 10 from the field, Matt. They are cooking. Lexi Held extends it to eight. Well, and now, now you're looking at a 13 to two run over the last two and a half minutes, and this is the danger zone for Providence because this is where DePaul can stretch it out. And with the way they shoot the basketball and control tempo, when it's a double digit lead, oh, it's tough to get back into it. Although we did see Creighton do that on Friday. Six on the shot clock here. The three for Spiewak is off. DePaul on a 12-0 run. They lead the all-time series against the Friars, 12-0. Stonewall, Look at that. what a move. And there's the professional type ability that you were talking about. And now the defense. Stonewall starts the press. She's that first line of defense. And that says a lot about your best offensive player who also is the spear of a really good full court pressure defense. It's a defense that has gotten better in conference play. They were averaging, allowing opponents over 70 points per game. Now part of that is the competition that they play in the non-conference slate. Doug Bruno was not pleased with the ease with which Providence scored that last bucket. It breaks up the 14-0 run. You know, that's why Doug Bruno really believes that Shante Stonewall is a WNBA type player. The travel on Deja Church, just the second Blue Demon turnover. What do you see in her that could lead her to the press? Well, I think, you know, obviously she plays in the four a lot for Doug Bruno at 6-1. That won't happen at the next level. So what she's had to do, John, is develop her game a bit more and become that three-level scorer that we're now seeing. Somebody who can shoot the three, who can pull up in the mid-range, and who can also get to the rack. And if she's happened to be guarded by a smaller player, she can post her up too. But I think the fact that she's added that defensive toughness this year just solidifies her spot in the W. At least she'll get a shot. D. Bekelcha on the break and a jump ball forced by the Friars. Her left Scott will go back to Providence. And we just saw Doug Bruno, over 700 wins. At the Paul defense, you know, at times they give up 
too easy a bucket, according to Doug Bruno. But they also forced the most steals and the most turnovers of any team in the Big East. Campbell with the interception, but short this time. Think about Coach Bruno, one of 12 finalists for the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. He's been doing it a long time. And such a champion of the women's game, which just continues to improve. And we were just talking about the WNBA with Shante Stonewall. Landmark year for the WNBA, John, with the new CBA agreement. Pay is increasing, benefits are increasing, just the overall experience for the athletes will be head and shoulders better in the years to come. Kathy Engelberg doing wonders with the lead. Morris off this time, Stonewall though with the offensive board. What a give to Morris! Timeout Providence. DePaul on a 16 to two run here at Wintrust. That's more like it. And Jim Crowley's hot. And you know why, John? Because he said that's the one thing we cannot do. Give up second possession opportunities to a team that scores over 70 points per game. And that's exactly what Providence just allowed. Jim Crowley said sometimes when you're playing DePaul, you have got to anticipate the run before it balloons. Well, now it's 16-2. They need to channel their inner Creighton Blue Jays right here. Blue Jays were down big against DePaul Friday night, stormed all the way back. It's tough though, because Creighton has veteran players, and that's something that Providence is missing this year without Maddie Jolin and Yo-Yo Nogic. Two players that you could go to and look to, not only in the huddle, but on the floor when things weren't going your way. Spiewak got the friendly bounce. Had to have that one. Big bucket from Spiewak. Kyra Spiewak was part of a Friars three-point attack that was at nearly 40% throughout non-conference play. Top 10 in the country. But an injury to the junior. Now she's come back. They need her from beyond the arc. Clock is stopped right now. And they're going to take a look. <laughs> Tom Danaher caught it. The difference in this game right now is points off turnovers. DePaul with 11 points off eight Providence turnovers in the first quarter. And that's what plagued Providence the last time these teams played. It was a six point game or eight point game going into the half, and then Providence turned it over 14 times in the second half, you just can't do that against against uh, DePaul. You cannot make those mistakes because an offense that already is going to average in the mid 80s. You don't want to give them any more easy opportunities to get up to 90 or to just make it easier on them within the pace of the game. Right. It's already hard enough to stop this team because they have so many weapons at all five positions. You know what's ironic with DePaul? They play at this fast paced style, the round ball express <laughs> as you like to call it. And I was talking to Doug Bruno, I said, coach, share me your secrets. Tell me what the key ingredient is to all this success, all you do is win. He said, I like to take a nap before every game. <laughs> hey, he's been in the game a long time and uh, you get a good look at him there, just a real teacher of the game and somebody that the players respect. You know, he's not only a player's coach, John, and that his players like him, but he's also the mastermind of one of the most prolific offenses in the country year in and year out. So he's well-respected as well. And anytime you got a guy with as many wins as he has, you know he's gonna command a room. 734, Doug Bruno, a Chicago native. Growing up, loves Chicago pro sports, still loves them. Through thick and thin, his family, it, it runs in the family. His son, part of the staff here. And his wife, Patty, at the games, behind the bench watching. She takes so much enjoyment 
in the program that he has built here, an absolute machine. And in the Big East, they've won four of the six conference tournaments since reconfiguration and five of the six regular season titles. Yeah, they're certainly the front runner to win again this year. Although I will say, if you get Jalen Agnew back for Creighton in time for the tournament and they're healthy, watch out. Marquette, although young, is talented. And Butler's having a surprisingly good year despite losing three starters and three players who were instrumental to their success last year. And then you also got to keep an eye out for Tony Bazella's team out there in South Orange because they could put up points in a hurry. We'll give you some updates on those scores. They are still playing around with the clock here. And we're nearing that year when the Super Bowl had the lights go out in the stadium and we were delayed. So we will take a timeout. Don't jinx us. A football score, fittingly. It's 21-14, Blue Demons. Back in. Stand up, stand up stronger. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. They've set the clock at 125. Five seconds ran off without the clock running. And 18 on the shot clock as Providence has the basketball. So Jim Crowley with plenty of time to get something together. Where would you go here if you're Providence? Well, Mary Baskerville has been doubled the entire first quarter. I think you run something for either Spiewak or Widmire. And here it is, Widmire in the corner. Well defended that time. I don't think Mary Baskerville's touched the basketball. Well, she touched it there, but it went off her hand. Right. She hasn't caught it. Let's say that in the post yet because DePaul has just swarmed her. A carrying violation on Sonia Morris. This first quarter has had some interesting things happen. You don't see a carry often. 14 turnovers combined. And eight turnovers in the last two minutes. Look, your Providence, you're down seven but you weathered a 15-0 run from DePaul. So that's something that you can take away positively from this first quarter. Now you want a positive possession here. Both teams have had four turnovers in the last two and a half minutes. And they find some sort of a rhythm. Friars have two triples. They've actually shot the ball 55%, but nine turnovers have kept them from getting clean looks. Williams kick out. There's a clean look for Spiewak. Knocking it down. Love it. Williams quarterback the offense in that half court set. And that's what they need more of out of Providence. The Bronx, New York native finding Spiewak. And that's the offense Jim Crawley wants to see that produced a 9 and 3 start to the season. Their best in over a decade. One second difference between shot and game clock. You said it, Matt. Weathering the storm and a chance to get within one possession after a quarter. And who would have thought that? I mean, anytime you see DePaul go 15-0 on a run, you don't expect to be within a possession at the end of that quarter. Williams navigating her way through. Pretty finish for Chanel Williams. Campbell, and that'll do it for the opening quarter. A two-point affair through 10 minutes as the Providence Friars score five straight to close it out. And an eight-nothing run. Great ball movement. And when you're hitting the three, it spreads the floor a little bit more and gives your guards a chance to get to the rack. We've got a fun one brewing here on Super Sunday in Chicago. Mr. Schumacher. You're watching Providence. Popcorn. We'll be back for the second after this. 
You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with a big That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The Providence Friars surrendered a 16-2 run. A Chanel Williams and PC getting within two Closing out the first quarter with eight straight points. Two-point game. Ten points off the bench in the first quarter for Providence. Campbell left open. Kelly Campbell off this time. She had eight points in the first quarter, but cooling off here in the recent moments. A chance to tie or take that lead back. Six of those ten off the bench came from Kira Spiewak. Couple threes, really stretch the floor. Providence shooting 62% from the field. Here's Williams with the pull. Got it. How about that confidence from the underclassmen? Going against best, one of the best seniors in the country. Love that. Six points for Chanel Williams. And a traveling violation called on held. This is where a young Providence team starts to get some confidence. And there haven't been a lot of moments this year that Providence can draw from for confidence boosters, one and nine in conference play. But, you know, the thing about this team, John, so many sophomores in the starting lineup, they'll all be back next year, and they'll all be back the year after that. They're developing a toughness by playing through these tough moments. When you're on the road taking on the number 11 team in the country and you see it's tied at 21, that's a confidence booster. You get the vibe in the building right now that the pressure is on DePaul. Coming off the narrow loss to Creighton. And it's unheard of to think that they could drop consecutive games. Spiewak travel. We're still very early here. And we've seen DePaul in conference play before get off to a start that says, okay, well, where's that rhythm? But the thing is, Matt, that avalanche, it's only, it's only a matter of time until it can happen. And so for Providence, the question's going to be, can they handle those moments as a young team with nine combined freshmen and sophomores? And Scott commits the foul. Well, and that, that's something that the entire Providence coaching staff has remarked about this year. They're all still kind of looking for that leader to emerge. Held with the fake and the finish. Lexi held up to four points. And a foul 
on Church. But what they're also looking for, and, and I thought this was the most interesting point. Yes, they're looking for a leader to emerge, but they're also looking for people who are willing to be led. He said there's a lot of voices in the locker room right now, but not a ton of people listening to each other. And, you know, it's hard to have that type of culture when you're one and nine. And so they're learning how to be a group of leaders and a group of learners and listeners. And that just takes time. And this is a tough stage to ask for it on against a program that has nine Big East titles. Morris with the long two. Providence, 11 turnovers. This time they break the press. What the 6'4 Geary putting it on the deck for a couple bounces. Speedwack. Look what I found. It's Cooper. Off to Geary with five. Geary with three. That was a wild shot. I don't think it's their plan for her to put it on the deck as Morris parries the three. What was that you said about an avalanche, John? 7-0 run right now for DePaul. It just comes so quickly. You could feel it coming from the Rockies. Webb. Here they come again. Non-stop pace. Have to button it up here defensively. Oh, ho, ho! Stonewall, the three and the foul with a fist pump to boot. Three level scoring threat. Shante the shot, Stonewall. And a 10-0 run for the Blue Demons in a minute and 24 seconds. And watch this fist pump if we've got it. She let out a big one here. Shante Stonewall. Reigning Big East Tournament most outstanding player and it's an 11-0 DePaul run. Williams with speed. Dribbled through everybody. Scott, a brick. That's not the shot Jim Crowley wanted. Oh, Church got a step, and we'll head to the line for a pair. And that avalanche has arrived. The Michigan transfer has given Doug Bruno's team some physicality. He likes the defense that she's brought to the table and Stonewall comes off to the applause but for Deja Church bringing Big Ten experience to this roster she's seen big stages NCAA tournaments just fits right into a championship culture well and she was a winner and in, in, in high school and that is exactly what Doug Bruno you know you hear so much about coaches wanting that not only to recruit talented players and high character players but winners because developing a winning mentality takes time. But she developed that in high school. She won three state, straight state championships in Missouri with Incarnate Word, which is a tremendous women's basketball powerhouse in St. Louis. So she came to this level with an idea of what it takes to win at the highest level. Baskerville with the turn and was fouled. That time the double came late. And how about this? At the 6.28 mark, John, in the second quarter, Mary Baskerville has her first opportunity to score. And that is called shutting down the post if you're DePaul. And honestly, even with as well as Providence has shot the three, DePaul has continued to stay the course, defending the post. They said, you want to shoot the three, we'll let you. But we will not let Mary Baskerville beat us on paint touches. Put her to the free throw line this time, and the 60% shooter buries them both. And a travel by Held. A seventh Blue Demon turnover. 
And these are some of the things that DePaul needs to clean up going into the postseason. Because, you know, obviously they have designs on winning another Big East championship on this floor. Widmeyer for three, and Sophia Widmeyer has provided a spark. Two triples, leading the team with eight points. Well, Matt, to your point, it's in the half-court offense that DePaul's had these turnovers. Dahlman off. I mean, it is night and day when they are able to get that tempo. And part of that is just the style that Doug Bruno wants them to play. DePaul ball, round ball express, get it up and down. So off the stop, they find that transition. Morris can't hit this time. Baskerville with the board, but Church anticipated it. Campbell extra pass to help. Wow. And the foul. That ball just zips. Doesn't stick, it zips. You want to know why this team is able to score so much? That right there was a perfect example. This was off a of steal, too, mind you. And held from straightaway three. So an opportunity for a second four-point play mm. in the first five minutes of the second quarter. Here he with the board. How about the unselfishness from Campbell there, too? Now up to six assists <laughs> in first three half. minutes. She's got 126 on the year, partner. She's a player who has embraced her role because she could score the basketball, too, John. How about that score from Alyssa Geary? Back the other way. What a response. Put it on the floor and finished. And we've got a timeout. Unselfishness from Campbell. But Geary with the answer in the Friars trying to put up a fight here at Wintrust. Count it. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We're in Chicago for some Big East women's hoops action. Second half of conference play opening up this weekend in DePaul out to a nine point lead on Providence in the second quarter. So we are in the Windy City. Yep. And the Philadelphia crew today over at Villanova Seton Hall, Nick Montagna and Kim Adams, our friends, were debating pizza. And they were talking about deep dish pizza. So now I ask you, where do you fall on deep dish pizza? Not a fan. What? Not a fan. 
Are you kidding me? I'm dead serious. Why? I'm from St. Louis, John. I'm a, I am a... You know what? Take the next 456 off and come back to <laughs> the third quarter. That's terrible to me. If you're listening to this and you've never heard of Emo's Pizza, Google image it and then hit John up on Twitter. You'll know why I'm not a fan of Deep Dish. It's night and day. I had Deep Dish last night and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, I'm happy for you. Right at Pisano's across the street. I and do. I don't want to hear that it's not pizza. It is pizza. I do like New York style. Not a huge fan of the deep dish. Okay. That's where Matt falls. Good thing Schumacher's not doing pizza reviews. <laughs> Five on the timer for Geary with three. Baskerville to beat the buzzer. And the Blue Demons get a stop. Wasn't a bad look for Providence. Just came really late in the shot clock. That three just short. I'm still in disbelief over your culinary likes and dislikes, but. My partner's salty right now. Your dietary use is far better than mine, so we'll leave it at that. The fact that you won an Instagram contest and have a suit getting <laughs> shipped to you is unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me, too. I can't believe it. I've never won anything on social media. <laughs> Ever. It's not normal for people to win things on social. Oh, I know. GQ shoe. I like that. 3.45 to go in this first half. We are still at the score that we came out of break from. No, you just got a shot of Mary Baskerville there. It has to be a little frustrating for her. She's used to averaging double figures. She's had a couple of big 20-point games. But you know what, John? That's part of it as a sophomore learning how to play through being the number one player on the opposing team's scouting report. And that's what she is this year. Last year it was Yo-Yo Nogic. Even though she, Baskerville, was the freshman of the year, Yo-Yo was still the player that you try to stop. Marissa Warren, you just saw check out. Doug Bruno working these freshmen in in situations that he can. Warren, a highly touted freshman. Off on the 2-3 she attempted here. Providence trying to cut it back to seven, perhaps six. Scott with a step, but was Look rejected by Stonewall. Back to the Blue Demons. Look at that. Stonewall with eyes in the back of her head, sliding over on the baseline. And the rejection. All-around player. That's what we talked about in the open. She's added that defensive ability this season. And how about that ability from Morris? Up to 14 points for the sophomore. How much have you seen Sonia Morris evolve? 14 points in the first half. Too shy of her average. And a foul this time on Stonewall. That is her second. Well, Friday night, DePaul led by 20 at the half. And to give you some context here, was with Monica McNutt yep. in Georgetown. They give us an update that it's a 20-point game at the half. You're thinking DePaul's on their way to win number 20. But then everything changed. And Creighton making a major statement for their NCAA tournament resume. Now the Blue Jays at 14 and seven to do that without Jalen Agnew because the selection committee looks at all these things. Right. They put all the variables together of if you've got injuries and you lost a game, those explanations are all explained well before selection Monday. But for Creighton to win that game without Agnew, who was a lead contender for Big East Player of the Year before she went down with the injury and still is an absolute contender. Now Creighton today at 16 and five Marquette that's a big game for two NCAA tournament contenders as well. Coming up on the Big East Digital Network. Spiewak for three. But Baskerville gets the board. Webb from the corner, got it. Kayla Webb with her first points of the day. And it's the fifth Providence trifecta. 
Well, they're a really good three-point shooting team, one of the better teams from distance in the conference. That's keeping them in this game right now. 12 on the shot clock here for Morris. Off to Hell. Hell with the drive. Out to Campbell with five. Don't foul. Another giveaway. The 10th no. by DePaul. Super well defended, John. And there it is again. Lack of execution in the half court for DePaul. Forced in part by really good defense from Providence. This is the way Jim Crawley knew they had to play here. Giving up 85 to Marquette. Now a foul on Lexi Held. And with six fouls, and DePaul on the penalty, that puts Erlet Scott to the free throw line, a 75% free throw shooter. Really impressed with Erlet Scott's growth. Oh, we highlighted a couple players in the open, and Erlet was the one we highlighted for Providence. You know, it was interesting, last year when we chatted with Jim Crowley, he said, you know, in conference play, she's just struggled a bit with her confidence. Teams know how to defend her a bit better. That is not the case this year. Very confident player on offense. Morris hits that 15-footer. 16.7 for nine from the field, and then they force a travel right off it. Critical 125 here to close out the half, because you've got it at single digits if you're the Friars, and you need to keep it that way. A youthful team like Providence. The difference between a single digit deficit and a double digit deficit on the road against a top 15 team. That's a, that's a night and day difference. Nadez Jean. The freshman getting fouled in the post. Richton Park, Illinois native, short on the first. Didn't play against Creighton the other night. Getting some clock early here against Providence. Has only played in 10 games this season, but Doug Bruno said on the run to March, you've got to find other contributors. DePaul once up 13, working in some of those reserves, but it's back down to eight here. Williams to the corner, Webb. Geary with the board. They had Webb open in the corner for a flash. But Geary was under pressure. Geary with seven. Geary on the deck. Back to Williams with three. Williams on the drive. That one just spinned off as Morris. And the Blue Demons with a four second difference between shot and game clock. Got to defend here. Keep it at eight. Give yourself a chance with a few seconds left in the half. What a critical possession in this game for momentum's sake in the locker room. Eight seconds on the shot clock. The Blue Demons looking to bounce back today. Morris has been brilliant. Hammering home the elbow J. Silky. Sonia Morris closes out the half with the bucket and DePaul up double digits. Oh, that is just a dagger. And she was setting up Providence for it. Knew exactly what spot she wanted to be at on the floor. And a silky step back. Here it is right here. Whoop! Back she goes. Beautiful arc. And down to the bottom of the cup. Nothing but nylon for Morris. 18 points in the first half, John. Blue. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We're all in all together.
together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with a victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we do. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. We are at the break here at Wintrust Arena, the home of the Big East Tournament from March 6th to the 9th. And DePaul calling it home for a few weekends here throughout the season, up by 10 on Providence at the break. Glad to have you with us courtside, everybody. John Fanta with Matt Schumacher. And as we look around the Big East in the past week, Matt, we're through first half of conference play, looking at some of the conference award winners here at the break. What are your thoughts on the league as a whole? Well, you know, I think one of the big things that we were all curious about was the competitive balance going into this season. I think it was seven of the ten top scorers from last year were seniors. So it was a new wave, new faces coming into the fold, taking on new roles this year. And I think we've seen a great competitive balance. Just look at Friday night. Creighton coming back down 20 on the road at a top 15 team in DePaul and taking down the Blue Demons. Nobody's safe in this conference, and that's what you love going into the final month of the season. And fittingly, those two teams featured in the awards from last week. Lexi held with 20 points per game in the two DePaul contests. And Carly Batchelor, the freshman, taking on increased role, which is important considering Jalen Agnew's been hurt. 15 and a half points per game last week to go with 11 boards. And that's just part of what Jim Flannery cultivates with his underclassmen learning from the upperclassmen as we look at the Big East honor roll. Isabel Spingola, the senior for Marquette, part of winning. Maybe wasn't the main part behind an all-time senior class last year, but when you play that type of a role for the Golden Eagles, it's now carried into the Megan Duffy era. And Kristen Spolier for Butler, oh. the senior, has turned it up a couple of notches. <laughs> Absolute bucket getter. All of these ladies are on this uh, on this weekly honor roll, but Kristen Spolier's had to shoulder a lot of responsibility this year for Butler. They lost over 50% of their scoring, two 1,000 point career scores, and the Defensive Player of the Year. And Butler, with a winning record in conference, I think doing more than a lot of people thought outside of the program going into the season. We'll tell you more about some Big East scores as the calendar turns to February. Big East teams across the conference will hold annual pink games to raise awareness for breast cancer and fund critical research. The Creighton men's basketball program kicked off the season of pink games in Omaha last weekend, holding an event that has become an Omaha tradition and a sight to behold. It's our 10th year doing the uh, Creighton vs. Cancer pink out. When we come together on a cause, uh, Creighton has shown and the city has shown that uh, they'll really rally around it. And uh, each year it's kind of taken on its own form and you know manifested itself into what it is today. And we're lucky to have the event. I think everyone has a, a unique first experience when they either come through the concourse or step out of the tunnel the first time you see it. It's really overwhelming. For me, uh, it's probably our stand up for uh, presentation we do. The arena goes dead silent. and. Uh, I don't think there's anybody that isn't impacted, and that's probably the moment that re resonates with most. Everybody's either is celebrating a life in some respect today, whether it's someone that, that they've lost to this awful disease, someone that's beat it, or someone that's currently 
going through it, uh, you're honoring someone. In my wildest dreams, I would have never guessed that the community and the media and everybody would have jumped on board with this like they have. When I'm done here someday, it'll be one of the, one of the proudest things I think that we've left behind. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go, you'll meet people you never thought you'd meet, and you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. Ten-point game here at the half in Chicago. DePaul 44, Providence 34. The Friars and Blue Demons were in a two-point affair after one quarter, but DePaul finding some separation to take a look at the first half highlights from this one. And this is the Blue Demons' tempo. Points off turnovers. They had 19 in the first half, John. And when you look at what the big difference is in that first half, they made five more shots than Providence. That's all it was. But they had more possessions to do so because of the turnovers that they created, the second chance opportunities underneath. Two things that Jim Crowley said we cannot afford to give up if we're going to contend for a W in this game on the road against DePaul. One thing you can say though about this Providence team, Williams was fantastic. Webb, very solid. And they got some good three-point shooting from Whitmire and Spiewak. It's not like Providence is out of this game, but they need to make a run here coming out of the halftime break. Because as much as DePaul was able to score 19 points off turnovers with that quick tempo, Providence had 13 points off 10 Blue Demon yeah. giveaways. Those 13 points were coming often in the half court, but it's just been a matchup of contrasting styles. And when DePaul gets out on the run, they can be a very explosive team. And seemingly, those runs, those mini avalanches, if you will, have been, been the difference here through 20 minutes. 20 down and 20 to go. We will have some stats to come here on the Big East Digital Network, give you some updates around the conference. It's been a wild Sunday already. 10-point game at the break. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. 
We have no debt. We don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Second half just moments away. DePaul and Providence in a 10-point game. So take a look at some of the first half stats from this one. We talked about points off turnovers. The Friars, with those five triples, sometimes DePaul can overwhelm you from beyond the arc, but Providence has held its own both beyond the arc and on the glass. Yeah, you know, when you look at these stats, there's not a whole lot that separates these two teams. Five more made field goals for DePaul. Three of those coming off of turnovers and a couple coming off of second chance opportunities. If you're Providence and you're down 10 in this game, it could be a lot closer than it is. And you know that you can make it a lot closer than it is because you did so with a couple of 6-0, 7-0 runs in the first half. I think these first five minutes are absolutely critical for the Friars coming out of the halftime break. If you're Jim Crawley, how do you ensure that these first five minutes are efficient and keep you within striking distance. I think you go straight to Chanel Williams, who showed great ability to stay composed, to break the press on her own, to find teammates, but also get to the rack. You tell Chanel Williams, keep the ball on the string, be the leader, run the offense. And then defensively, John, don't get out of sorts because you've shown the ability to really defend DePaul well in the half court. I think if you can force them into the half court by making shots offensively, that's a recipe for success, not only in the first five minutes, but throughout the second half. And who knows, maybe Jim Crowley's looking at a chance to upset the number 11 team in the country. The Friars have never beaten DePaul. Jim Crowley's team gave DePaul a run for their money a few years back in Chicago. It was a tight game. Down to the wire. It's all contrasting styles, folks. When Providence has been able to force DePaul into the half court, the Friars have been able to have some measured success. Church short on the three, and there's the stop in the half court. Oh, 
No, I like this. I like having Geary and Baskerville on the court at the same time because it forces DePaul to make a decision, John. Do you double Baskerville and leave Geary open, or do you go straight man? And then potentially leave yourself vulnerable to, to Baskerville with her back to the basket. That's a tough proposition. The double teams inside have forced turnovers. Providence has committed 13. Scott muscled that up and in. And there's the composure that we talked about. She was dead in the water down there. Picked up her dribble, was defended in the paint, looking at a three-second violation, and just steps through. And held with a miss. Right now, if it's not coming in transition for DePaul, it just hasn't been the same for them offensively. Widmeyer got a step and lays it up and in. I've been so impressed with how she's played today, and now a quick timeout. <laughs> Doug Bruno's got a smirk on his face. He's seen enough. This is the punch that Providence needed. And they have landed one to start this third quarter. Jim Crawley's Providence Friars, just one and nine in the Big East. But in this conference, on any given, well, today, Sunday. Timeout in the Windy City. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. A six-point game suddenly at Wintrust Arena. DePaul in need of a strong possession in the half court. Stonewall with a tough look. That's short. Baskerville going for the rebound, and we got a foul called by Frank Sterator for being over the back. Oh, that goes against Baskerville. I thought it was going to go against Scott. And I believe that is Baskerville's third, John. So that puts her onto the bench with 8.40 to go in the third quarter. That's a, that's a tough one for Baskerville. There it is, the three off the inbounds. Quick trigger, Sonia Morris. She has been dead on 21 points on 9 for 11 from the floor. Think she's dialed in after the loss on Friday night. Widmeyer off. Geary trying to get after it and does. Well, Providence was spending so much time getting back in transition <laughs> that Cooper had to come back to the other end of the floor. Geary with the pull up. Not the shot that Jim Crowley wanted. 
Off the stop. Stonewall between the legs. Spin move. Offensive foul. Drawn by Webb. And that's Stonewall's third. So now what does Doug Bruno do here? Here's another look at it. Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Looked like maybe Webb slid over late. Stonewall is going to stay on the floor with three fouls. And now an offensive foul on Scott trying to get some separation. And I believe that's her third. Just her second. No, that's her second. You're right. But this is a situation, and Jim Crowley with a perplexing look. You commit an over-the-back foul. It turns into a DePaul three. Now off the offensive foul, that's a turnover. It gives DePaul another out-of-bounds scenario. These are the little things that Jim Crowley wants to see a young team start to flip as the season goes on. No doubt. And now a foul on Geary. And that's tough, John, because Geary at six foot four, not nearly as quick as Deja Church, who's going right to the rack on her. Another three off an inbounds. Deep Bekelja. And you could call that a second chance opportunity because Providence has been defending on this side of the floor for about the last 45 seconds. You can't ask a team full of sophomores to do that against one of the best offensive teams in the country. And off two fouls, two inbounds on the baseline, and they score off two threes. Geary was doubled. And a foul going for the rebound. And we're seeing fouls pick up for both teams now. A lot of whistles here early in the second half. But again, now DePaul's on a 6-0 run. And so Providence needs to find somebody to go, go and get that must-have bucket here. Get it back to 10. Held with a deflection. Lexi held flying up the floor. Everything but the finish. She'll head to the line for two. Yeah, Whitmire, Whitmire's complaint was that she didn't get the arm. She got the ball, but she caught the body, and they'll call that every single time down the floor, especially in transition. What a day in the Big East already. Seton Hall and Villanova at the pavilion. Wildcats had led by double digits. Seton Hall puts up a triumphant comeback, similar to what they did at Hinkle Fieldhouse at Butler. And the Pirates in a tie game with four seconds left. Second free throw for their freshman, Maya Jackson. A couple of deflections on the rebound. Shadeen Samuels has a look what I found moment. Lays it up and in for the win. Seton Hall now seven and four in the Big East. Meanwhile, Georgetown, they are up right now on St. John's in the third quarter. Oh, that's just unfortunate right there. The second chance finds the hand of DePaul with a point-blank look. And a timeout called by Jim Crowley. And there it is, John, the 9-0 run for DePaul. You knew it was going to come at some point, so now Jim Crowley calls the timeout. How do you weather this? Who do you go to? And here's the thing. Baskerville goes out with three fouls. And so that has left... Geary to be the lone post presidents for Providence. 15 point game. We'll take a break. Blue Demons, nine straight points. Forced to turnovers and getting out on the run. You're watching Providence Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. 
and you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. DePaul up by 15. So out of the timeout here, Providence looking to break up a 9-0 run. John Fanta, Matt Schumacher with you from Chicago. Widmeyer. Now Williams with 10. The sophomore with the spin. And Chanel Williams puts it up and in. She's been the go-to this afternoon. The junior now, I beg your pardon, with eight points, three assists. Here's Hell, the sophomore who's taking that next step. Banking that one in. Lexi held 15 points per game overall, but in conference play is up to 17 to lead the team. And this Blue Demon squad, folks, with three players averaging 15 or more points per game during Big East play. Held Stonewall Morris a triple threat as Williams is heading to the free throw line. Lexi held that make. Here's Williams, who has really impressed you. She's just so quick. Low to the ground, great handle. Can get to spots faster than her opponents on most occasions. Williams now 26 for 31 from the free throw line this season. Here's what I love about Williams, John. She got moved to the bench on the 17th of January. Coming into the day was five for 19 since being moved to the bench. Today, Williams is four for six, nine points, three assists, a rebound, and a couple of steals. He's just tough and can adapt. And those are the players you want in your program. That's that Bronx toughness. Yep. Now off the turnover. Spiewak all alone in transition, pulls the trigger, and buries the triple. Wow. Third three for Spiewak. Kyra Spiewak with nine points. On the drive, but Kelja can't score it. Look at Williams go. Off to Spiewak. A reset here. Williams asking for the ball. Getting face guarded by Bakelja here. 12 on the shot clock. Geary's way too far away from the basket here. Eight on the timer now for Williams. Gets the screen from Geary. Goes the other way. And just can't <laughs> put it in. The rim. That's the type of break you get if you're the visitor. Stonewall in and out. They get an extra chance here in transition. Hell. Rare A third miss. chance. Morris. Battle for it, and a foul finally called. And this is on Providence after giving up three straight offensive rebounds. Mm. That's tough. Third on Geary. 
So now your two post players, Geary and Baskerville, in foul trouble with three. And you have to leave Geary on the floor, John, because you can't have them both on the bench. That puts Geary in a tough spot. But if you're Providence, you have to find a way to not allow DePaul to get three opportunities there and then put Held on the line. Off on the first. Lexi Held. Sophomore from Burlington, Kentucky. 2,000-point score in high school and a Miss Kentucky basketball finalist as well. Still a 10-point game. And we get a foul on Morris. That's the 14 foul on DePaul. That's the last one they had to use before Providence gets into the bonus. And that helps Providence, obviously. Down 10, if you can get to the line, it stops the clock. Gives you a chance to get some points back without time running down. Scott was turned around and then puts up a wild shot. Off the scramble, a foul on Cooper. And that's just going to send DePaul back to the line. This is where you're sending a team that shoots nearly 80% at the line, Matt. I don't know. I, there's been a lot of quick whistles in this second half. So here's Kelly Campbell, a native of Wall, New Jersey. And she's missed one free throw all year. Last year, a Wooden Award semifinalist, a Naismith finalist. And on top of everything she does on the court, she spent parts of two summers on service missions to children's homes and orphanages in Guatemala and the Dominican Republic, where she did construction work around the orphanages and also worked in the fields. So just the ultimate student athlete at DePaul University. And just a high level person off the floor which is what it's all about anyways. She said she doesn't care about points. And that's why she just reached 1,000 on her career. It's about the assist category. And rebounds as Williams wills that one in and the foul. I love the grit she's playing with tonight, man. Four for seven, 10 points, fearless take. Man, that's a tough finish. She's smaller than anybody she goes up against in conference play, as it is. She's got a Lions mentality. A Lions mentality. 5-4, John. You talked about the Bronx toughness. Yes. Jim Crowley just calls her straight up hard-nosed. And that was a hard-nosed take. She's a gym rat. She's always getting her shots up. But that's just courage. Deserves a Bronx slice after that. There you go. One. You would like one, too. I would. Held the short. And Widmeyer comes out with it. They've got two on one here. Widmeyer off to Williams. Gets another chance at it. Williams. Oh, that for Providence was a great opportunity for them to get within six. Have to defend here. Held long. And now a foul going for the rebound. And DePaul in the penalty. That's the second foul on Held in about the last two minutes. There's been a lot of loose ball fouls in this second half. Way more than we saw in the first half. DePaul, a rare streak, John, of 0 for 6. Friars are right in this thing here. Janelle Williams is the reason why. 13 points, three assists. She's only missed five free throws on the entire season, so this is essentially a free two. Here's what I love about Williams. We talked about it, got moved to the bench on January 17th. Back-to-back -back games with double figures, John, and she's got a new season high. 
this afternoon against the number 11 team in the country. I don't believe in the jinx there, but she misses <laughs> one of two there. And Morris with the turnover. That's the 13th Blue Demon turnover. And now, Matt, we're deep enough into this game where the question has to enter. What do you think it is that is a little bit off with DePaul? Well, I think Providence has found a way to muddy it up a little bit. Yes, they're trailing. Yes, it's been double digits a lot today. But Providence, you know, you got to credit them. When they've turned it over, they've gotten back on defense in transition and made DePaul pull it out a few times. Oh, a foul on Morris. And that is her fourth. When you put pressure on a team for long enough, John, it changes the dynamic of the game. And conversely for Providence, when you hang around for long enough, you start to believe that you can win. And then when you enter late third quarter, fourth quarter with a winner's mentality, there's no telling what's going to happen. And that's what we saw with Creighton on Friday night. Erlette Scott. 75% free throw shooter. Has led the team in scoring in four of the last seven games entering today on the Big East Weekly. On a roll and has made this a five point game. Held short. Long rebound opportunity and a foul on Providence. It's on Spiewak. Man, we've got bodies going to the floor here. <laughs> we've got scrambles everywhere. This is a preview and a fitting preview at that to what we'll see in the Big East Tournament inside this building. Speedwack, I like the effort, but you also have to know that you're probably not going to get there. You've got two DePaul players who are ahead of you. And you got to understand that a foul sends them to the line. Now the 14th foul of the third quarter. It's a lot of fouls. I don't think we had 14 in the first half. And DePaul, a team that shoots nearly 80% from the line, is just 7 for 14 today. Scott's stuck, still stuck, and that pass gets picked off. That's where you consider a timeout. And another foul, and this one on Cooper. Now, Jim Crowley only has two TOs left. Yeah, I understand why he didn't want to call it there. But you've got a player in Scott who's not a point guard, who is under significant pressure from one of the best defenders in the conference. This is Maya Stovall at the line. Nick Curry has hampered her season a little bit. Has come back, playing 12 minutes a game, has played in 15 contests. You got Geary, Baskerville, and Williams on the bench right now with a minute and 43 left. This is a real test for a young Providence team. Who's going to step up here? Well, and the pressure really is causing problems. Jim Crowley wanted a timeout. They call the five second violation. Well, this might get overruled, but I think if you're Jim Crowley, you have to think about putting Chanel Williams back into the game. Angela Lewis, Tom Donaher, Frank Steratore, and Angela Lewis is calling the five second violation off and awarding Jim Crawley his second to last time out. That's a, <laughs> that's a big swing. Doug Bruno doesn't like it. But uh, saved by the bell in the 12th hour for Providence. You know, I don't know if they're going to put Chanel Williams back into this game. So now it's on Kayla Webb's shoulders. She has to demand the basketball, John, and lead this team. And Baskerville hasn't played for the last eight minutes, seven minutes. She went out at the 842 mark. And yet it's a single digit game. Well, because of the speed that they've had to play at, they've gone a little smaller. Cooper still having trouble with it, and now that's a five-second violation. So and even off the timeout, you commit a five-second violation. Not what the Friars needed in an eight-point game now. Campbell surveying into held, and one. Oh, that is tough. That is really tough. 
Got to love that from Held though. Understanding where she is on the floor. She's got a real nose for the net. And now Held well into double figures on a really efficient five for 10 shooting. And she can do it inside out, John. We've seen her spot up from three in transition. We've seen her go to the rack on an out of bounds play. We've seen her put it on the floor. Northern Kentucky Coaches Association Player of the Year in high school. Another free throw miss, but they get an extra opportunity. So a chance for a four, even five point possession now for the Blue Demons. Stonewall. Not this time, and Providence will get it back here. This is where we were at the half, a 10 point game. And Baskerville's back in. Need someone to help break this press. Baskerville off the catch. Scott. Find a way to get Baskerville a touch on this possession if you can. She's got a size advantage on Bakelja. Got to move. Eight on the shot clock. Baskerville off to Scott. Couldn't hit the three, they got an open look. Here come the Blue Demons, final minute of this third quarter. Stonewall, back door, but count job! And one! This is just quintessential DePaul basketball. Moving without the rock, getting into spots, teammates knowing where each other is going to be on the floor. Seven zero run. And now show now Williams is back in and with her quickness, you can easily get the ball inbounded. That's what they were lacking when she was sitting. Scott, ball fake on the drive and was fouled. So she's got two free throws now. Well, you credit Providence. They have hung in for most of this ball game. But it's those runs that DePaul seemingly breaks out of, where they find separation in an 8 nothing run over just 123 a game time. Earlier in this game in the first half, a 10 nothing run mm -hmm. over just a buck 24. Scott, the strong free throw shooter hitting both. Defend without fouling here. You do that, you give yourself about four and a half seconds to get a shot and maybe make it a single digit deficit going into the fourth quarter. It was a 10 point game at the half. DePaul, despite shooting 33% in this third quarter, has found enough to keep that arm's length. Held, kick out. Bekelja with three, the spin. No. Oh, put back up. One second left, they get a third look and everything for Stonewall in terms of hustle, but just couldn't put up the result to show for it. We've played 30. 10 to go from Wintrust. The DePaul Blue Demons looking to clinch a 28-20 win season. Final 10 minutes after this on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. 
a diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. If you got plans for March 6th to the 9th in Chicago, cancel them because the Big East <laughs> Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep is back in Chicago, the 2020 edition. You can get tickets now, www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. If you've got plans on quarterfinal, what is that, quarterfinal Saturday? Yes, you got it right. March 7th, <laughs> cancel them at 12 p.m. 2.30 p.m., 6 p.m., 8.30 p.m., all with my man John Fanta on the call right here at Wintrust Arena on Fox Sports 2. That's, that's can't miss TV, John. You got that right, Matt. It's going to be fun. BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. Get your tickets now. Packages start at just 50 bucks. Scott, we call a double dribble. 11 point game here to start the fourth quarter. So let's look at DePaul here first. Doug Bruno makes it a point. And this might be only an 11 point game, but it feels like it's bigger than that considering DePaul's the leading team. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see from the Blue Demons in this fourth quarter? I want to see attention to detail. Execution of the little things. That's Shante Stonewall's shot right there. And then there she is creating a turnover. Stovall coming over. That's DePaul basketball. Drain the three, get in your face, force a turnover. And now they have a chance for a five to six point swing. That's DePaul basketball. Stonewall with her second three of the day to open up the quarter. It's been Sonia Morris with 21 points on an efficient 9 to 12 from the field. Off to Stonewall. Pull up. Senior is short this time. Geary with the board. Stonewall trying to get it back. Morris does for Bekelja. Bang! That's all set up by Stonewall, who missed a shot but didn't allow her lack of offense to determine her effort defensively. And that's part of the reason why I think she's a WNBA player. The Blue Demons hitting the gas and just turning it up another level here to go up by 17. Scott surveying off to Williams. Friars greatly need a bucket. Three on the timer, Williams blocked by Stonewall. Stone cold defense and a shot clock violation. And she will just frustrate the heck out of you with a stone cold look on her face while doing it. Even keeled competitor. And her high school coach said she's got a competitiveness that you cannot teach. You could say the same for Kelly Campbell. The threes are raining down now. DePaul starting this quarter. Three for three from three, and here's another turnover. Up ahead, Stovall. Blue Demons are putting it away. 11 straight points to start the fourth quarter. Timeout Providence, their final. And DePaul on its way to a 20th win in 2020. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. DePaul is known for a high octane offense. They can get it done with defense too, and that's embodied by Shante Stonewall. Two blocks, a steal. She's accounted for three turnovers today by herself. And oh, by the way, she has nine points and four boards. This press has caused nightmares for the Friars. BWAC foul. Here's what I love about Stonewall. It hasn't been the best day for her offensively, John. Three for ten from the floor, but it has not affected her defensive effort and tenacity. She's creating points by way of defensive effort for her teammates, not even for herself. Teachable moments, no matter what the score is. That's the M.O. for Doug Bruno. Just such a champion for women's basketball, for DePaul basketball. You know, I love the story that, that Doug Bruno tells about how he got into women's basketball in the first place. Because he was a player in his heyday, and he was coaching on the men's staff back in the 70s, I think it was, and the AD came to him and said, we want to start a women's basketball program, will you coach? And he said, sure. And he wasn't even getting paid, John, in the beginning. But he said those were his two favorite parts. Those were his two favorite hours of every day, women's basketball practice. And now here he is years and years later. And uh, one of 12 gentlemen up for the Basketball Hall of Fame. He said it all comes down to great players through the years. When he did get that call, though, had a moment of reflection just on the type of run it's been and how special it is that it's come at DePaul University. Mm -hmm. He said the people here, the community, how supportive they've been of him, and his family is DePaul. And DePaul is family to Coach Bruno. Widmeyer, to your point as well, not only has he done it at DePaul, multiple gold medals with Team USA, coaching with <laughs> Gino Oriema, who will coach against next year at least twice a season in the Big East. You know, I think when you look at what he's been able to do with this DePaul program, you know, the Big East as a basketball conference is not technically a Power Five conference, right? Because you don't have the resources that these schools, these state schools have with the football programs and the multiple revenue producing sports. Most of these Big East schools are single sport revenue producing, men's basketball. But Doug Bruno has continued, and many of these coaches across the conference have continued to put together year after year competitive programs against not only this conference, John, but in the non-conference, against those teams from Power Five conferences. You see them in the postseason. You see them in the NCAA tournament. To me, I think that's what's most impressive because you're going up against schools and programs with vastly greater resources. Stonewall short this time. And while we're on the topic of resources, how about this building? It's Wind Trust Arena is top of the line. Program transformer for both men's and women's basketball. Right in the south loop of Chicago. It is state of the art. And we'll host the Big East Women's Tournament next month. But a Hall of Fame career for Doug Bruno. And also, 
he has linkages with some of the other finalists. Swin Cash, Tamika Catchings. We talk about the USA basketball linkages. And the WNBA. Man, what a list of great people in the game. Paul Sandiford, who spent 25 seasons as a collegiate coach. He was a legend at Western Kentucky, won a JUCO national title, and Doug knows him as well, very well. When you look at DePaul, you know, the last uh, women's basketball bracketology came out before the weekend, so it was before their loss to Creighton, which is not a bad loss. Creighton's a very good team, and, uh, you know, has been in and out of the top 25 this year, has been in and out of receiving votes. They're, they're a, an NCAA contender, no doubt about it. But Charlie Cream had DePaul as a three seed, starting in Chicago, and then if they were to advance, they'd be in the Greenville Regional. How awesome would it be for DePaul to be hosting here at Wintrust during the NCAA tournament as a three seed? The Blue Demons are certainly within play, and that's why they only play a certain number of times here at Wintrust to enable that if they were hosting in the NCAA tournament, that this could be the eligible site in that first weekend. Now 19-3, losing to a Creighton team Friday that's been hovering around the top 40 of the RPI. And it'll be interesting to see where the polls, how things fall tomorrow. Right now, Creighton and Marquette playing in Milwaukee, and the Blue Jays are up 32 to 19 on the Golden Eagles on the road. That would be really something for them to pull out a road win at Marquette as well. <laughs> I mean, those are the two wins right there that secure them as a team that's safely in the NCAA tournament, I in agree. my opinion. I agree. I agree entirely. Now, do you think if Creighton wins at Marquette, they're in the top 25 tomorrow. The poll is like the mafia. <laughs> when you're in, it's hard to get out, and when you're out, it's hard to get in. Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough to know that. But I guess more importantly, it's the bid of the NCAA tournament. And I think a weekend like this in early February without arguably one of the top three players in the conference in Jalen Agnew, that speaks volumes to the type of team that uh, Jim Flannery has in Omaha this year. The Blue Jays winning here at Wintrust Friday without Agnew. Agnew back in the rotation today. Put back for Warren is off. And the jump ball. It will stay with DePaul. You know, you think about this program as well. There's no signs of slowing down. The sophomores this year, Morris, Mm -hmm. held the job that they've done. Well, and I think too, John. The Kelja. With UConn coming in, that helps everybody. But I think it also really helps to Paul in particular since that's who we're talking about because you get a chance to play one of the premier programs in the country twice on top of the non-conference schedule that Doug Bruno and his staff puts together year in and year out, you're playing on a big stage when you come here to Chicago. And it's only going to get bigger with UConn coming back to the fold. They've signed two dynamic recruits for next season. So that goes for Spiewak. Kyra Spiewak with 13 points today. On the back door. Here's Campbell. The Kelja again. Money. Mm. Wow. DePaul up to 13 threes on the day and a timeout. As Kelly Campbell comes off to an ovation. And Kelly Campbell with a triple double 12 points, 11 rebounds, and 13 assists. How about that? <laughs> All smiles on the bench. She's a special player, and you documented what she does off the court. It's even better than what she does on it. DePaul shooting 39% from three today. They shot 29 
against Creighton on Friday night. They just keep shooting. They just keep shooting. So Kelly Campbell recording the triple-double. It's the second of her career. She did it as a sophomore. Shante Stonewall comes off to the applause as DePaul. This is a great opportunity for them to work in some of their younger players. We talked about the recruiting being done with this program. They've got Darian Rogers, Lake Park West Guard, and Kendall Holmes coming in. Rogers, among the top 50 high school players in the country. She's on the Nate Smith High School trophy watch list. Well, this was a 10-point game at the half, and even late in the third quarter, DePaul was having a bit of a tough time with Providence's defense. But they've outscored Providence 23 to nine here in this fourth quarter, as that one's laid in. John puts it in. Her first bucket of the game. That's gotta be a great sight for Doug Bruno to see his freshman deliver as Webb answers. So many great players around this league. And you know, we talk about Shante Stonewall, who's now gone to the bench. Doug Bruno really feels like she's a WNBA player. I feel like she could definitely be in the mix. Shadeen Samuels is projected right now to go in the third round. To who? None other than the New York Liberty. So she get to play her college basketball right in around the New York City area, and then potentially could play her pro ball there. You know, the interesting thing about the WNBA, it's just all about fit and timing. And we saw that exemplified none better than with Natisha Heideman, who was cut twice, and then finds herself back on the original team that cut her for the WNBA Finals and played on the run to the WNBA Finals. Orange Short with the extra chance, and the freshman banks it in. Marissa Warren out of O'Fallon, Missouri. And there's your 90. They've hit it. They average 85 per game. And they started this season with a 98-point performance against Miami of Ohio, scored 109 on Arkansas State. And by my count, it's the eighth time they've hit 90 this year. <laughs> That's called filling it up. Like you're about to do for the Super Bowl. That's right. <laughs> filling up on popcorn. Oh, I, I was thinking of something different than that. But yeah, that's that's good too. On the drive, <laughs> one block. <laughs> so who do you like in the Super Bowl, Matt? I like Kansas City. You know, San Francisco, obviously, they. They're one of two teams at the end of the regular season in the, in the NFL that had a top five defense and a top five offense. Yep. But I love Pat Mahomes. I love the speed on the outside for Kansas City. But more than that, John, you know I'm a Missouri guy, so I got to stick with my fellow Missourian team. KC Chiefs, who do you have? I like Andy Reid and the Chiefs as well. As that goes for Kira Dahlman, a transfer that they believe can play more of a role as the season goes on. I love Andy Reid. Yeah, it's such a great story. The key is if Mahomes can handle that four-man pass rush of San Francisco. Right wing three is short. And that's a really, it's a big question. The fact that San Francisco doesn't need to throw in a heavy pass rush and can drop everybody back in coverage. Seven in coverage, only four on the rush, but those four are so strong. John, here's the real important question for the afternoon. Where will Mr. Fanta be taking in the sights and sounds of the Super Bowl? Watching with some high school friends here in Chicago. Lovely. You know, I'm a Cleveland native. Yes. And so a lot of guys, uh, call them Chicago transports, if you will, come out here for work and hanging out. And so I'll watch it here in Chicago. I am bringing over Pisanos. I knew it. It's right across the street from the <laughs> arena. And so I can just 
Uber. For those that don't know, yep. Pisano's is, <laughs> is John Fanta's de facto home also, when he comes to Chicago. It's across the street from the building, so. <laughs> yes, convenience certainly plays a factor. Yeah, the folks in the truck right now are like seven feet from it, and they can smell the pizza. And they have pasta and appetizers and you name we, it. We did check out a new Italian joint across the street here when we came for the Paul Men's victory over Texas Tech earlier in the year. Yeah, they opened that one up. We love our food. You can't go wrong with Chicago Italian. Nope, but apparently you can go wrong with Chicago pizza because you don't like it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, come to St. Louis, I'll show you what a real pie tastes like. <laughs> I asked somebody about the place you recommended. They said, last time I had that, I was hung over after a wedding. <laughs> All right, final seconds here. What did you learn about DePaul today? Well, I learned that uh, this team can rebound from adversity, which they faced on Friday night, blowing a 20-point lead, losing for the first time in conference play. They've overcome some adversity today, though, John. This final score doesn't indicate that, but at one point in the second half, this was a six-point basketball game. And then they came out after a Doug Bruno timeout and looked like a different team. An 11-0 run midway through that third quarter, and they have not looked back since. If they can play like that in March for all 40 minutes, watch out, because this team's going to make a deep, deep run in March Madness. First free throw is good for Heaven Bristow, a freshman who has played a variety of, of minutes here this season. Only six minutes today, and she hits both. Clock winding down. For the 28th time in program history, DePaul has a 20-win season. The Blue Demons win it 93-71, behind five in double figures. Doug Bruno, the legend. His Blue Demons bounce back today. Providence put up a test for three quarters, but DePaul just pulled away late. They outscore the Friars by 11 in the fourth and slowly wore them down. Shooting 45% from the field. How about this? 41 to 18 in points off turnovers. Out rebounding Providence as well by five. After this, we'll talk with the senior for the Blue Demons, Kelly Campbell, who's coming off her second career triple double. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. DePaul's Kelly Campbell ties a program record with Jessica January, a second career triple-double today, joined by the senior now. Kelly, you do it all for this team. I want to go back to when you were growing up in New Jersey. Where would you learn how to do just a little bit of everything as a player? Where's that mindset come from? I don't know. I think it just really comes from being a point guard and just doing whatever my team needs. So whether it's getting a steal, getting a rebound, or just finding the open teammate, really just doing whatever we need to win. In this game, it's a 10-point affair at halftime. Providence kept within single digits. What was said in the huddles that then led you to pull away? Well, we obviously didn't have a great second half on Friday, so when we had a few bad possessions to start the second half this half, we, uh, Coach Brown obviously called a quick timeout and just really made sure we were focused on executing and 
not letting the same thing that happened the other day happen today. You lead in so many ways for this team. Who's an inspiration in your life that you take leadership qualities from? Um, I'd say my sisters. I'm the youngest of four sisters, so they've definitely been great role models for me. A lot of backyard games growing sure. up. Yeah. <laughs> for you and this DePaul team, what did you learn about yourselves today? Um, I mean, obviously we had a tough loss on Friday, so just we're really able to bounce back and get a great win tonight. So that was huge for us. And we're capable of so much if we just really stay focused on one possession at a time. That's so much that you talk about that you're capable of inside this building. Yeah. I know it's in the here and now, but how much is there that pride factor that you know in March as a senior, you defend this court and a championship in the Big East? Yeah, definitely. I mean, since we play the Big East tournament here, we're always trying to defend Wintrust, defend our home court. And I mean, obviously looking forward to playing the Big East tournament here as well. You did that today. The always humble Kelly Campbell Thanks. with a triple-double. Anything special after a triple-double? Nope, just glad we got the win. <laughs> Where are you watching the Super Bowl? Where am I watching it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right. She got a triple-double today. Kelly, congratulations. Thank you. All right. DePaul, a winner. The triple-double for the senior. Been a pleasure to be with you here on this Super Sunday where DePaul was super. 93-71. They make it a 13th straight 20-win season. For my partner, Matt Schumacher, Alejandro Trevino, and our Rush Media crew producing, I'm John Fanta saying so long from the Windy City, the Blue Demons at the top of the Big East, getting to 10-1 with the victory over Prop. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do.